So what's up guys, this is a beginner video about the principal shader. I'm going to go through every single setting of the principal shader and most importantly I'm going to try to explain to you and help you what are the relevant settings, which settings you can freestyle, which settings you better not touch, especially as a beginner. Because I watched the CG Matter uh, tutorial about the principal shader, I thought it was a little bit confusing, a little bit misleading, especially for beginners, and even a little bit wrong. And I thought if even CG Matter himself still doesn't fully understand how the principal shader works, a lot of other people probably also don't. So I'm going to make a video about that right now. I'm going to fly through this video, try to keep it short. So the first one is obviously color. You can set whatever you want here. The only recommendation I would have is don't go full extreme. So don't do all one or all zero. Use anything in between here. But basically, you can freestyle this, set any color you want. The next one, you should definitely not freestyle. So in this room outside, every single object is either metallic, yes, or metallic, no. It's dielectric or non-dielectric, meaning metallic is zero or or one, nothing in between. So for beginners especially, it would make more sense that metallic actually was a switch between on and off. It's either metallic or it's not metallic. There's nothing in between. Yes, there's some materials, some rare materials, even aluminums or mixed materials that would be in between, but 99% of all materials you can cover by setting zero or one nothing in between. So zero or one, nothing in between. The next one is roughness. Roughness is pretty self-explanatory. It's the roughness of the surface. So yeah, that's it. Uh, just freestyle. Just set whatever you want and it will look fine, to be honest. Uh, the next one is the IOR, the index of refraction. I was actually watching CG Matter trying to set up the index of refraction of gold, researching gold. Definitely don't do that. Don't research gold. Don't set anything here on a metallic object. To be honest, don't ever touch this setting at all all except its transmission. So that means it's glass, it's honey, it's a diamond or whatever. But if it's metallic, it won't do anything. Don't touch it. If it's non-metallic, it actually will do something, but do not touch it because what does it do? It's actually the Fresnel value, the index of refraction of the Fresnel of the specular, something you should definitely not touch. So this is a fixed value to you. Do not touch this value ever unless you're using transmission. Okay, next one is alpha. You're not going to make glass with alpha. Alpha is not a physical based attribute. It's fake, it's unrealistic, but it still has its use case. Uh, you would use it for infographics, for UI elements, for artificial elements, for maybe holographic elements. Anything that is fake, you can use alpha, but definitely don't use it if you want to make anything realistic. The next one is normal. This is not a setting, but I'll tell you one thing anyways about this. So if you drag in a texture very often, it's going to be sRGB right here. Obviously for a normal map, you need a normal map node. Oh no, we're wasting time on normal map node, but this is not a normal map anyways. What I tried to tell you here, if you're not doing RGB or emission RGB, you're always going to use non-color detail. If you're going to hook up this to roughness, to metallic, to anything, it's going to be non-color color space. Um, yeah, just a rule of thumb. I see that all the time that people have sRGB in roughness. Do not do that. Always non-color unless it's a color meaning RGB because the normal is vector three. This is vector three, but this is RGB. Very important. So RGB, sRGB and anything else non-color. Okay, I think you remembered that and know that now. The next one is subsurface scattering. You might use that. It's obviously for skin, for wax, for plastic, anything that lets light penetrate and glow up the surface. But yeah, some rule of thumbs. First rule of thumb is if you're doing skin, use skin. If you're not using skin, don't use skin. Uh, only use one or zero. So weight basically again is more should more be a switch to be honest for beginners between is it on or is it off the subsurface scattering. Don't do anything in between. Just do one or zero. The next one is the radius. As CG Matter mentioned, it's basically a color. That's kind of correct. It's actually a vector three. It's not a color. That's also why it's purple, but RGB does work in Blender. It probably wouldn't work in other programs though. So instead of choosing weight, we can actually turn down this real quick. And here we have some subsurface scattering from the point light. Instead of turning down weight, we're actually going to turn down color. So flesh would have something red, green plastic or green wax would have something green. And here we would change the strength, not here. You can, but I would rather recommend to beginners to not touch this. Just turn it on or off. The next one is the scale. This is a freestyle value, I would say. So the scale is how deep the color penetrates the object. I would say just freestyle it. So it just looks good for your need. The next one, better don't touch as a beginner, especially do not touch. So what this does is anastrophe. It basically is a type of Fresnel for subsurface scattering. So if the light comes in straight, it penetrates further than it does if it comes from a side. So if it's off, it really spreads. And if it's on, um, yeah, it doesn't spread. It's more straight linear. So kind of like a Fresnel effect angle based subsurface scattering. Do not touch as a beginner. 
Okay, I think that's enough for subservice scattering. Let's turn it off. So another lot of things you shouldn't touch. So here is the index of refraction level of the specular. That's basically the strength of the specular more or less. So let's turn on the sky again. So unlike the Fresnel of the specular, we have the strength of the specular. So name one object on this planet Earth that looks like this, not a single one. Exactly. So never set this to zero, never set this to one. To be honest, rule of thumb, especially for beginners, do not touch this value at all. Same goes for this value. Do not touch it. Leave it at 0.5 at all times. If you don't know exactly what you're setting here, do not touch it. Do not set it. It's going to look just fine at 0.5 and it's definitely not going to look fine at one or zero. Um, okay, next one is tint. Another beautiful value to not touch, especially as a beginner. Have you ever seen a material in your life that looks like this? So let's make this white real quick with red reflection oh hell no that doesn't exist so do not ever touch this tint ever unless you know exactly what you're doing and that would be for example if you have a car paint at this roughness that is red in the fresnel angle it's a little milky a little unsaturated you could add a pump into the tint and get more kick in the red so it's really a candy red metallic but a dangerous setting that you're probably going to set wrong instead of right so better don't touch it if you don't know what you're doing the next one is a setting i don't really understand why it's in the principal shader there would be way more relevant settings in the principal shader like translucency or velvet but for some reason till this day they have anastrophe uh, for metallic objects so what this does is for cds for example all the new kids don't know what the cd is so we can take a pot the bottom of a pot has these little circles so that's what you can do with this you add this and you get these little circles you can add a rotation and you can flip it and yeah it looks like this uh, anastrophic is either zero or one and even for the rotation to be honest zero or one uh, and yeah to be honest just don't touch it as a beginner almost forget everything I just said. Don't ever use this because it's so special. This is no material actually uses this. This is so unique. Um, you're not really going to ever need this. But <clears throat> I can tell you the next one anyways, though, even though you're never going to use it. Um, so you can add a tangent here. So by default, it's going to use, use the UV direction, I think, of the object uh, to decide on where to place this effect. Otherwise, you can just use a tangent or other node math to flip the direction. But I don't even know why I'm explaining this to you. So basically, Summing up the specular, do not touch this, do not touch this, don't ever touch this or this, and don't change the tangent. Just close this. Okay, we're going to go to transmission. So this you're actually going to touch. Finally, we're at a very relevant setting. So if I turn it to one, nothing's going to happen because it's metallic. There's no metallic water. So the next thing, now finally you're allowed to touch the index of refraction. Now you actually should really touch it because this is very important. But this is not a value you will freestyle. So this is the index of refraction of this liquid, of this honey, of this water, of this glass, of this diamond. Diamond, for example, if I remember right, is 2.2 water, something like 1.4. But research these values. This is one of the few values you should not freestyle in but should set and should research the index of refraction of anything that is transmissive um yeah i think that's everything you need to know about that the next one is coat so coat is also a bit weird that it's in the principal shader coat actually doesn't exist in the real world what is coat so if we have this surface, let's say this is wood, yeah? And you're going to polish this wood. Polish, 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 polish. It's going to look like this, yeah? But what happens if you have metallic orange? Polish, polish, polish. You're going to have this, but you don't want a mirror. You actually want this look, but you want a smooth surface. This actually doesn't exist anywhere on planet Earth. This material is impossible. Because if you would actually polish it, it would be a mirror. You know, if you have an aluminum ball, like foil ball, and you polish it, it's be going to become a mirror. But you want a rough surface. But how are you going to make a car paint? So in real life, you add a second shader, a second material, which is a clear coat. It's basically glass on top of this metallic surface. So the coat setting is actually a separate shader built into the principal shader. Weight only zero or one. Don't do anything in between. Just do zero or one. If you want to boost it, you can do two. But we're uh, yeah entering unrealistic territory there. So just do one and you're going to be good to go. Don't do anything in between. Just do one. And I didn't really mention this. Only for car paints, basically. I can't even think of any other material that would ever need a coat like this. You only need a coat if you want metallic roughness and a smooth surface, you will never use a coat on non-metallic objects because you're going to get a double, re like you could if there was a clear coat, maybe, but this is already a very special materials. Don't do it. Only on car paints to be safe. The next one 
it makes sense, I guess. I don't have to explain. That's the roughness of the clear coat um, right here. Oh, wait, let's add some car paint maybe. So that's the roughness of the clear coat. No rocket science, just freestyle it. Uh, obviously the clear, no, not always. So on some carbons, maybe it's going to have a rough clear coat. So that's definitely possible. The next one is the IOR. Very dangerous setting. Do not touch. What does it do? Maybe you already know by now because it does the same as the top. It's the Fresnel of the specular of the clear coat, which is a separate shader in the principal shader. So do not ever touch this. The next one you're definitely not going to touch is why not? Because uh, this will actually tint the reflection. And this is not metallic, so yeah, there's no reason to ever touch this unless it's a very special... Just don't touch this. Don't, don't. Okay, next one is the normal. That's the same of the normal. It's the same as here, but uh, yeah, it's uh, for the clear coat. So you can add, add like an orange peel. I don't have to show you, but like you know how it works, I think. I hope at least. Okay, let's move on. Um, so maybe sum up. Zero, one, roughness, whatever you want. Do not touch this. Do not touch this. Okay, we got that. Turn it off again. Sheen. So sheen is very important, but something you maybe should never touch. So on my t-shirt, there's a little fuzz and in the Fresnel, in the angle, it gets milky white unsaturated because of all the fuzz. That's what sheen is. But sheen and blender in the principal shader is so basically done that it's actually only a Fresnel. It's so bad that you should actually not use it because it will actually make it more unrealistic. Not because sheen is unrealistic, but how it's implemented in this principal shader. It's very unrealistic unre because yeah, a sheen is way more complex than this. You would need a type of velvet and noise and everything, um, which you can't even really do here. So to be honest, to all the beginners, I'm not saying don't use Sheen, but don't just do this. Um, yeah, don't. And yeah, the Sheen roughness is basically the IOR, so the Fresnel IOR is don't do this. Don't touch it. Um, emission, so obviously you can add a color. And here, unlike the base color, here you can go over one, definitely, because it's a LED or whatever. Here you would have the strength. Makes sense. One little tip for warm and cold colors. Don't start adding some orange or blue colors here. Add a black body node, just like this. And you can add it to 8000 for Xenon or whatever. Or yeah, 1500 is like, I don't know, fire or whatever. You can research these values also. But yeah, don't freestyle these colors if you have some basic hues. <laughs> Unlike LED, which we would be pure red, then you would actually add pure red. Okay. Next one. Thin film. Also a bit misleading in CG Traders, uh, CG Trader and <laughs> CG Matters video. So yes, bubbles do kind of have a thin film, but it's much more visible on, for example, a windshield or even my watch. So in certain angles, the specular changes color to blue, to red, to different colors, basically. It's a very special effect that you're probably never going to really use ever. Um, can we even see it here on the metallic? So as you can see here, if I bump it up, it gets blue. That would be similar to my watch or orange, similar to windshields. So what this does is a type of rainbowish Fresnel. Yes, kind of seen in bubbles, but actually what CG Matter mentioned that is seen in bubbles is actually something different. And that's basically actually a literal color, which would be, for example, color in the base and you could add distortion and you would have something like this. So this is much more like a bubble than a thin film. A thin film, yeah, very special setting. It is cool. You can have it on headlights and some other things, or like I just said, on the glass of my watch. And there's some things that definitely have it, but it's pretty special. Um, do it if you know what you're doing. Otherwise, don't touch this. Uh, I would say that's it for this video. Um, it is, the video did become quite long. I really tried to speed run this, so I'm sorry if it was too long for you. But yeah, that's it for today. I hope you took some valuable lessons from this video. I hope I gave you some structure in the principal shader, hopefully. Um, and that's it for today. And yeah, goodbye.